friends and welcome to Knowledge by Nature. In today's video, I want to show you all of the resources that I use for teaching language arts. When I am talking about language arts, I am talking about reading, writing, phonics, grammar, and spelling. So five different topics in one and that is what I want to show you today. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. Before we get started, I am a homeschool mom to a first grader. We love all things books and homeschool and sharing our journey with you. And if that is something that you're interested in, I ask that you hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. So as I am thinking about second grade, I got to thinking about all the things that I've been using over the first grade year and I thought this might be helpful for me to do a few videos of how I teach certain subjects. If that is something that you're interested in and if you enjoy this language arts, put down in the comments below, let me know that that's something you would be interested in as far as how I teach our electives, how I teach our math, things like that. Let me know what you would like to see down in the comments and I would be happy to make those videos for you. First, we are going to start with how I teach reading and that is I am using the All About Reading program that you see here in front of us. Here we have All About Reading. This is level two. I have used pre-reading level one, level two, and just a little sneak peek into second grade, we will be getting level three. We both love this curriculum. There's just a wealth of information in it. We have this teacher's manual that you will purchase to go with it. It is really, really nice. It's very scripted as far as say this, say that, have the child say this. There are a lot of activities that you get with the activity book. I actually took my activity book apart and put it in this binder, which has been really, really nice. You have a progress chart sheet, different rules, and then all of the fun activities. Like I said, there's so, so many. You get these practice reading sheets that you will use before you read your readers. And then as far as the readers go, we have these two readers here, volume one and volume two. Comes with level two. This is the color edition. These are very, very appropriate for the level two. It starts out quite simple for level two and then it slowly begins to get more and more words on the page and just different ways that we would read them as far as you can see. See back here there was like little speech bubbles. Here we're reading off of like a page or a notebook page and then here we just have our regular like book style. Again, really, really pretty, really nice books. The stories are fun and engaging and something that is very, very interesting for the child. As you can see in level two, as we get towards the back, we are getting quite a few words on one page, but you don't have to read the story all at once either. Even as a level two, you can break this down into smaller segments. So this is my biggest resource for teaching my daughter how to read. She is a very good reader and she has done tremendously well with this program. Since we were just talking about all about reading, let's go ahead and look at what I am using for spelling. For first grade, we have used All About Spelling. Again, this is by the same company as All About Reading and it is a multi-sensory multi approach, step-by-step -step lesson plans, customizable for every student in a built-in daily review. This is one of those things where I definitely break it down into a multi-day process. Let's just flip to um, step 12 here. So this would be lesson 12 where it is teaching us how to spell words that are containing the consonant teams of TH, SH, and CH. We use the tokens. So first we review our cards here we get out the tokens and we segment the words. And so these are the words that we would be segmenting and she would pull down from each side. It puts little notes here and then we go to this next section where we have new teaching. So I'm going to spell with the tiles. So we're either gonna use our bananagrams for this or the actual spelling tiles or our letter app and we are going to spell out these tiles. We will probably stop here for the day, 
The next day we will come in and we will spell these words on paper. So this will be the end of day two for spelling. Day three, we will come in with more words. We may spell with tiles, we may spell with the app, we may spell on paper. We will probably do most of these, if not all of them. And then the next day, we will do dictate phrases. So as you can see, I broke this lesson down into one, two, three, four, separate days and possibly even five. We might have like stopped day one and not done all of these, but come back and did these the next day. So I definitely break this down. It goes slowly so that we are not getting overwhelmed by the spelling. And I feel like it does a pretty good job of teaching spelling. I will probably continue this on into level two, but I may end up adding a little bit of an extra resource later on we'll see but all about spelling is how we have used it for first grade it's wonderful to pair along with all about reading because they are using the same rules the same wording and so they're just going back to back they pair up nicely I did forget to mention that all about reading we do four to five times a week all about spelling at the beginning of the year we were doing it pretty regularly and then we kind of took a break from it but now we are back using it and we are doing it two to three times a week on the spelling for handwriting we had this for kindergarten and we actually had started cursive and I will show you what I use for that in a moment but we actually went back and we finished this up for first grade this is really nice for really getting the formation of the print letters down and it gives you just different little steps to be able to get that. Um, I may actually pick this up again because I think it is really good to make sure that we keep our print looking nicely. And that was something when we started our cursive, which is the Roller Coaster Rider. We were doing really, really good with this. She enjoys this. She actually asked to do cursive. And so when I found this, we liked it. But as we started going, I noticed that our print was getting a little bit sloppy. So what I started doing is first we went back to print for a little bit and then we've started rotating both of them. So we're doing cursive on one day, print on the next day, cursive on the next day, print on the next day. That way both of them are continuing on because she does like to write the cursive, but we need to make sure that our print letters aren't falling behind at this age. But this is called Script and Scribe Roller Coaster Rider, and so it is the introduction to cursive. It shows you how to begin this with all of the initial loops and drops that you would begin with, and then you start going into the letters. So here you can see you're starting the initial movements of cursive and then you work your way into doing the actual letters where you will do the lowercase letters and then you will eventually get over into the uppercase letters which are at the back of the book. So there's plenty of space to either copy, you trace the line and then write it yourself or you can just trace it. These are the resources that we used for handwriting. Again, we are now rotating these every other day. That way, both of them are continuing to go. And then there's also many times where some of our other curriculums, as far as history or science, all of those are also, there's copy work in them. And so when we do the copy work, we do print. And so we may actually skip that if we are doing copy work with print on one of our other curriculums. Next, I have 100 Write and Learn Sight Word Pages. This is for grades K through 2. This is something I actually bought for kindergarten and never used it because the way that the workbook is set up, if you were to cut this word out, you could not use the second page of it. You couldn't use these letters. And so that bugged me and I never started using this. Well, finally this year I decided to go ahead and start using it and we just don't use this section. So we write, we trace the word and say it aloud. 
write the word and then she can either fill in the word here or she can just fill in the word here. Here she's chose to do both and then she writes her own sentence. This is kind of a little, this is both sight word and I feel like it's a little bit of spelling all together because there's the repetition of the word and fitting it in the sentence. And this is a book that I can just give to her and have her do it because it's the same every single lesson. So we know that we're going to trace the word and say it aloud, write the word, write it into the sentence, and then write our own sentence. So this is something I can give her. We look at the word and she can go and she can do this on her own. So this is something really nice to have for that reason alone. Plus it gives her a little bit of extra practice with sight words and spelling the word. For phonics, we finished off with Explode the Code. We had this level one for kindergarten and we went ahead and finished this off for first grade. This is really nice. It's not one that I'm going to purchase again just because we're getting our phonics in a different way and I have another workbook that kind of incorporates some of this. But if you are looking for just a solely phonics workbook this is really really nice you read you copy you write it you spell it again there's just a lot of nice things that i can hand this to her and she can just go do and do something on her own without me needing to be involved so that was really good for this but again i don't think it's something i will continue on but it is really really nice especially for the kindergarten level and the first grade level and I did mention that we use our phonics kind of in a different way and I will show that to you towards the end of the video where I show you how we use electronic apps for reading and our language arts programs. All right, more language arts and this is our main curriculum for teaching the grammar section of language arts. This is First Language Lessons for the Well-Trained Mind. I actually have the book that has the first and second grade all combined. So you can see we have the first grade and we have 100 lessons of that. And then we have the second grade and there are 100 lessons of that. I really like this. I think this is a great, great way to teach for this younger age. I like it very much. This is something that I will continue on for second grade for sure. This is something that is used four days a week and usually we do math, reading, grammar, all of that Monday through Thursday and Friday is a game school day. And so this is usually not done on Friday. I really, really like this workbook. This is something that we use. One, it is fantastic for if you're traveling and you are going to be gone for a little bit longer than you just don't want to be doing anything because it has phonics, spelling and vocabulary, reading and writing, language arts, sequencing and sorting, math skills, addition and subtraction, shapes and measurements, time and money, so social studies and science. So as you can see, it's a hefty workbook here. I really, really, really like this because I feel like that I'm able to fill in any gaps that I might be getting with language arts and grammar. Not that this isn't a complete curriculum because I feel that it is, but there's just a few things that I feel that just fills in a couple of little holes that I might be having with my language arts. And it's also a really, really great way to practice some of the phonics and spelling that we have inside this Explode the Code. It's very, very similar, a lot of the activities in here that there is an Explode the Code. Now, granted, you're not gonna get as many, but this is not a very big one. This is usually not going to last you the full year. I believe for kindergarten, we did A, B, C, and then most of one, but a lot of the activities that I have in Explode the Code are in this Brain Quest workbook. I do really like it. You have a phonics section so you can practice your phonics. You have a spelling section where you can practice the spelling. 
uh, a vocabulary section, and then language arts. You look at the images, you read the sentences, and then you put in the correct word that goes there. And so there are quite a few pages that you can do of this. And so I do really, really utilize this workbook for language arts along with everything else. Now, again, I'm not using this all at once. Um, if I do language, if I am doing first language lessons, I'm probably not going to do this unless I'm just pulling out something specific on phonics or something like that. So again, I'm not using all of these workbooks at the same time. I'm not going to do explode the code and the workbook. I'm not going to do sight word workbook and this workbook on the same day. These are just kind of looped through and I use them at different times except for this which is four days a week. All right my very last piece of workbook curriculum material that I have is the complete writer writing with ease level one workbook. I really like this. It's Again, scripted, it's nice, you know what you're supposed to say. That's something else I don't know if I mentioned, but first language lessons is scripted. It tells you what you as the teacher needs to say, and then it tells you what the child should be saying. Very scripted, open and go, you're done in a few minutes. It's lovely. Same thing here, very scripted. It tells you day one, you're going to, so here's week seven, day one, you're going to have some copy work. It gives you different sizes of sentences to use. So right here we can see on the copy work, we have a small sentence and then we have a little bit of a bigger sentence. So you choose which one is more appropriate and your student can write that. Then you have a small section that you would probably read, a narration exercise, then day three, copy work, and then day four, we have a narration exercise and copy work. And it goes like that throughout the entire book of four day schedule, copy work, narration, copy work, narration. Again, it's scripted, not much work on the teacher. You just read it, give it to them, choose the appropriate page that they need to do for the copy work, and then you are good to go and you have done your writing for first grade. Now, I also think that playing games is a very essential part of learning. And so let me show you what games that I have for language arts. The newest game that we have for language arts is Super Genius Reading 2. And how this works is you have this deck of cards that you get matches for. So you will have an image page and you will have an image card and then you have a word card and you have to match a card with the image. So like for instance, this says ball and we have the ball, so those two would match. There's three or four different ways that you can actually play with this one deck. It's really fun and we both enjoy this one quite a bit. We have a sight word swat, which is also a really fun way to practice sight words. This is for ages five and up. It has different levels that you can play. So it starts at kindergarten and it goes up. It features 220 sight words. You have these little swatters and these flies and you swat the fly whenever you call the number. The different colors are the different levels, and so it's really, really nice that you have all of these levels in one game, and this is a really fun language arts game to play. The last one that we have here is Zingo. It is pretty much a bingo game with the words. You get the word out of the little Zingo holder and you cover them up and the first one to Zingo wins. So this one is for pre-K to first grade. This was really fun. We've used it for kindergarten and for first grade. And I think there's actually one more level, like for level two possibly. So I need to be looking for that for second grade. Now let's go over to the desktop and see what we use for our digital gaming and learning language arts. All right, let's take a look at what I use for our electronic learning for language arts. 
One of the things that's really, really awesome is teach your monster to read, and this is completely free. So you can come on to teachyourmonstertoread.com. You can register or sign in, and there are just some really, really fun ways to play and learn your letters, your sounds, and then starting to read full sentences. And again, this is completely free, guys. So it costs you nothing to go and check out. Really, really cool, super fun. She really, really enjoys to play this. And like I said, it's free. So that's amazing. The second thing that I use, which is a pay subscription, is Reading Eggs. I love this thing. It is so awesome. I actually ended up purchasing the full year with it because it's just so good. All right, so Reading Eggs has quite a few levels here. So even if you might be interested in something besides second grade, go ahead and take a look at this. So as you can see, if you've never used this before, you get a 30-day free trial offer. So click here, try it out. We use it on both the app and on the desktop. And like I said, there are a few different levels here. We have Reading X Junior, which is um, for ages two to four. We have the regular Reading Eggs, which is ages three to seven. The Reading Express for after seven to 13, after they have followed this, it also includes math seeds. Guess what? I use that too. And then this year, they actually ended up coming out with Fast Phonics. Let's see if I can find that for you here. Okay, it's right here. We go to Fast Phonics, and this is something that they've come out with so that you're practicing your phonics a little bit more. So this is a language arts curriculum almost in itself right here with Reading Eggs, where you get your reading and you get your Fast Phonics. So you're getting both your phonics and your reading with this really, really fun game. Again, it works on the phone, it works on the tablet, and it works on the desktop. So these are our two absolute favorite ways to play and learn reading or phonics at the same time. So again, that was Teach Your Monster to Read and Reading Eggs. Now let's get back and finish up this video. All right, everybody, I hope that this was very helpful. I hope you enjoyed seeing it like this. If you did, again, please put down in the comments below if you would like to see another video. Give me a thumbs up if you like that. Hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you in my next one. Bye!